In this build, you're gonna see a lot of collaboration and a lot of hard work. Everybody in the shop played a role at some point in this build. Um, it was very labor intensive. Spent a lot of time running the, uh, the CNC mill, the Novicon. Um, and I also worked a lot on the LeBlanc uh, metal lathe. I'm used to working with nice, clean, flat bar stock. Um, so going from that to something that has all kinds of edges and angles, and it's, it was very difficult to fixture them and maintain rigidity in the setup enough so that we're not breaking cutters. Action. All right, let's get started. It was just an insane amount of work. Ellen and Derek worked for two straight weeks just on the lions, not to mention all the forging that was involved. For the Axe of Godric, I did the main forging of the, the axe blades. Uh, that was a somewhat challenging forging, but it was uh, pretty fun. I like challenging outside the box kind of forgings. With forging, especially these, these large axe blades, the real challenge isn't necessarily the form itself, it's manipulating something so large. Uh, if you can't hold something, it's really hard to forge it. Um, so it tends to bounce around and run away from you and makes it extra fun. So it's not necessarily the forms that are the challenge, it's the manipulation of large materials because you're holding onto a bar that weighs 25 pounds and it's flopping around on the end of a set of tongs. Also, it's 2200 degrees. <laughs> Extra excitement. So I also, other than the forging, I helped Ellen do the chasing and repose. I did a lot of the heavy work on that to move those along quickly. Those are time consuming. If I was to take on the Lions, the Chasing and Repose work, I would, uh, I would plan for like two or three weeks just to do the Lions. Granted, they would probably be much more detailed, but that's a serious undertaking. Uh, chasing and Repose is not a fast thing to do. For this particular project, I'm doing some chasing repousse lions in copper. A similar technique to the lions that we did on the other project. I've done some chasing repousse work before on my own terms. It's just chasing repousse work takes a lot of time. So what you're seeing on camera is like three seconds of something that takes, I don't know, 30 plus hours. And it uses like specific muscles in your arm that just make your neck and your shoulder hurt badly. It's fun, you should try it. The rampant lines are generally pretty stylized, so you have to take the image that they have you and stylize it further because you can't do a thousand million pieces of lion hair in the time frame that we have. So the design of the lion had to be altered a little bit. Plus it's freezing. So you're working in pitch, which is like a pine tar uh, substance that doesn't really like to be very cold. So you have to keep heating up your, your metal as well as yourself because everything is cold. So working in the middle of January, because we are in the middle of January in Maryland, where it could be 40 degrees, it could be 60 degrees, it could be 12 degrees. Uh, it has been all three of those temperatures throughout the shoot. Working in the cold does mess with your uh, small motor function, being able to do like really intricate stuff with your hands or holding your hand in a very particular uh, way for a long time or anything else like that. It also like, kind of numbs your brain a little bit. People say like, oh, heat and cold doesn't really affect brain function like it does.
Doing the Axe of Godric uh, from Elden Ring, basically I've been stippling and texturing the sides of the axe blade. Uh, it's basically a journey of Sisyphus, because every time I would get done one, one piece, I would remember that there's three others that have to be done. It takes a while and you just have to pay attention to really tiny stuff, and they picked the biggest guy in the shop to do the really tiny thing. It was great. <laughs> the texturing on the axe does give it a lot more depth and it gives it more of a dynamic feel to it. We're going to be uh, putting gold paint on the rest of it, um, which will make it pop exponentially, uh, exponentially so. So it's kind of an important part just to make it look right. Click the logo to subscribe or click one of the videos to see more here on the Baltimore Knife and Sword channel, or go to Almy and watch Man at Arms.